Okay, it looks like we are live. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the November 3rd, 2021 Artist Conversation at Prolet Gallery. And we're so lucky to be here tonight with author Lydia Yuknovich and painter Stephen O'Donnell. And uh, they will get into an hour long conversation spanning who knows what uh, very shortly. And I want to just give a few brief introductory remarks. Uh, this conversation is helping to celebrate the occasion of Stephen's ninth solo exhibition here at Prolet Gallery. And the show is on view through November 27th. So please just come knock on our door or send us a line to make an appointment and come see the show. We're open Tuesday through Saturday. Our regular hours are 10.30 a.m. to 5, or 11 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Um, or you can call for an special appointment. Um, let's see, we're in Portland, Oregon. And we're on the unceded traditional village sites of bands of the Chinook, Clackamas, Cowlitz, Kathlamet, Multnomah, Malala, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Tumwater, the Wasco, and many other tribes. These people made this area their home along the Columbia and Willamette rivers. Now I want to send my gratitude and thanks. I want to honor the legacy of the native communities that have stewarded this land from ancestral generations of the past to those over seven, 70,000 strong here today and the many generations of the future. So, and to our artists, you might see that they're right here with me, Stephen and Lydia. And the program tonight will be, I'll leave the stage and hand it over to them and we'll be showing some images of their work. And uh, the two of them will uh, also field questions. So feel free to put a comment or a question in the comment section on your viewer. And we'll get to those as we can, but we'll also dedicate about the last 10 minutes of the program uh, to questions from the audience. I wanna give a brief introduction for both artists tonight. Uh, hopefully many of you know them, but hopefully many of you don't, and this is an intro. Uh, Stephen O'Donnell is both a visual artist and uh, a singer. And um, I understand there's a literary uh, thread in there too. So um, I became familiar with Stephen's work in the mid 1990s when uh, Stephen was showing, and I'm saying this Stephen, even though he's sitting right there, or standing right there <laughs> on the screen, uh, when Stephen was showing at the wonderful Quarter Saw Gallery, and I saw your show at La Luna Nightclub, mm -hmm. um, and at Basil Hayward Gallery at Powell City of Books. So, um, and after Victoria closed Cortisol Gallery, Stephen and I started working together. And the first show here was, first solo show was 2002. So as I said, this is our ninth solo show together. Mm -hmm. Yay, number nine. Um, Stephen is a self-taught painter and known for an enduring engagement with historicized portraiture, um, recomposing art historical work, self-portraiture, droll humor, and quite a bit of freedom with gender identity. So um, just spoiler <laughs> alert. Um, uh, the Portland Art Museum, the Leslie Lohman Museum of Art in New York City, both hold his art in their permanent collections. And we're happy to announce that the Halley Ford Museum of Art at Willamette University just added one of Stephen's paintings to their permanent collection. So congratulations. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In 2018, Stephen and his amazing wife, Gigi, mm -hmm. published this fabulous book, The Untold Gaze. <laughs> uh, it's really, where do I get it in there? There we go. Yeah. We have copies of it at the gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a big coffee table book, and it is wonderful to both look at and read because it has loads of Stephen's paintings reproduced in it. And then it has loads of great uh, short fiction and poetry by lots of 
uh, Stephen's friends that are writers, including Kluka. Okay. Mm. <laughs> uh, and now to Lydia. Uh, mm. For those of you who don't know, Lydia is an author. Um, and Lydia's work spans so many genres and is not easily classified. Uh, her books include the novels The Book of Joan, The Small Backs of Children, The Misfits Manifesto, and Dora, A Head Case. She wrote the widely acclaimed anti-memoir The Chronology of Water, and her next novel, Thrust, is forthcoming from Riverhead, which is a, a subsidiary of Penguin, I believe. So you'll find that out soon. Lydia loves art. As she says, maybe more than books. We'll find out. History, <laughs> water, and the Mingos, both elder and younger. Uh, so now I'm going to turn my microphone off. Stephen and Lydia, I'll hear you. I'll be on the side. I won't be on screen. Um, and I'll uh, please, to the audience, send your questions and comments in. We'll try to put them up on screen as we can or at the end of the program. And uh, thank you both very much. So cheers to a great show. And I'll, um, I'll exit and go to the website and share that. Thank you. Sweet. Thank you, Charles. And it is such a deep pleasure to be here with my good friend and mm -hmm. fellow artist and mm -hmm. um, fellow explorer of the edges of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stephen O'Donnell, I, I am just filled with gratitude and pleasure to get to talk to you. Jeez, and, Lydia, you're, you're killing me here. <laughs> I make people cry. It's my day. Make people cry. <laughs> well, you look gorgeous as oh, I do in the green room, uh, but particularly on the occasion of this incredible exhibit with this work that is just so... Um, rearranging of your DNA if you mm. if you look at the images and you get to see the show, which I hope everyone does as they can. Yes, yes, yes. But what I want to start talking to you about is kind of up where the title of the show is. Uh-huh. And we can move by way of paintings, but can can we just get up there in that title? Of course. And here's, here's what I mean. Yes. Re colon pose mm -hmm. subverting the gendered gaze in the historical nude that has yeah. so much of what i love <laughs> <laughs> sure. it into a single title gaze pose subverting <laughs> historical nude um so could we just kind of unravel just the title for a second and if you'd like to move by way of a painting um after the Rokby Venus by Velasquez is 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 potent in these terms, uh -huh. um, which yeah. maybe Charles can help us with. But I just want to talk about that a little. You know, the ideation, the context, um, as a starting place for viewers. From this painting, or going back to talking about the title itself. Let's. The title is what the context is for me, right. and I'd love right. to hear about that. They could look at that as you're speaking, though, because it has right. the elements of the title in it so profoundly. Well, it was quite the challenge to to wedge all of the ideas I wanted to the that I wanted to express that I thought I was working with in this show into one little title that, you know, it's like, oh gosh, how long is this title gonna be? But um, <laughs> so just trying to find the right words to express that was tough actually. Yeah. Um, and, you know, because uh, it was very specific what I was trying to do with this. So, um, I mean, the, the biggest, the biggest, most obvious thing about all of this work, almost all of this work, is the idea of taking the uh, classical Western female nude, um, the objectified, uh, glorified, um, usually fairly passive uh, female body, and uh, putting a putting a man's body in that place, um, switching it out, um, and seeing and seeing what that looked like, seeing how um, we reacted to that. Um, 
yeah, and you know, and ju and just just exploring that. The other thing that I did in this show was working with there's two female nudes in it. Yeah. Um, and so going the opposite direction also and 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 trying to locate a um, classical male nude, usually an academic nude, because that's usually how the male body was presented. Right. Um, and putting a woman's body in there and exploring what that looked like, which turned out to be uh, quite a challenge because I think we're so conditioned in the way we look at a female body right. that um, no matter what position what um setting i put that body in she still looked like soft um passive um and that's the opposite of what i was going for with that yeah. so I, I finally found a couple paintings where i could um express the strength and power um and um actual beauty of a female body of a female body not a not a um glossed over, right. um, tidied up body, but a real body of a woman and, and have her, uh, ex, you know, express that strength and, and power that, that I wanted to. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's profoundly apparent in, in the viewing of the work. Um, I want to kind of lock onto something you just talked mm -hmm. about that we're conditioned how to look Mm -hmm. And we're particularly conditioned how to look at the female body as oh. object in art history. Oh. And we're conditioned to look at the male body a certain way, which you were mm -hmm. just talking about. So let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about this gender gaze business. Uh, some people are familiar with the male gaze and what that mm -hmm. means in art history. Not everybody is, though, right. if you want to say something about that. Right. But this gender gaze and how we're conditioned to look. I love that phrase. Well, I, I think I'm I'm mainly saying that male gaze thing. I mean, the the you know history of art you know that we know about mm -hmm. that we're presented with is done by men. Um, you know, um, usually you know for um, the heterosexual m man to look at, and so it's all sort of geared in that direction. And you know if you go through hundreds of years of the, the same intent behind the work yeah um that that is going to i think color um the the way we look at things you know as humans you know it i think we have to fight against that um that long history of it being that way to to be able to look at it any differently i, I mean, agree start, i agree yeah. And, and the white body also, I mean, that's another thing I, you know, was trying to explore um, a little bit in this show um, to have some bodies that weren't white and, and how does that affect the way we look at things? Um, Charles has been kind enough to put the original of mm -hmm. the painting that's the referent. Yes. Um, so I want to ask you two things while we've yes. still got this up there. Now there's a classical image of mm -hmm. a female nude it is complicated by the mirror image and yeah. the, the angel figure and the right. ribbons and so forth. But yeah. it is a classical woman, white, mm -hmm. nude, right? historically speaking. Yeah. But when I look at the two images together, mm -hmm. your, your repose mm -hmm. and this historical classical nude, something happens to me um i'm gonna say an agitation happens <laughs> that sounds good <laughs> for me if, if that's an okay word to use for I think it so yeah and i look at the classical woman nude body differently uh -huh. and i look at your image with a male nude differently than i would look at a male nude as i've been conditioned to look as you said uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so that's why I'm using this word, an agitation occurs or a, oh. does that resonate for you that they speak to each other, but they also vibrate? I hope they do. Yeah, that that's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, this you know, there's only so much I can <laughs> plan out, you know, in, 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 so, you know, I can't, I, I never quite know how um, an audience, you know, how the viewer is going to 
in, you know, react to these um, paintings. So pretty much anything is good <laughs> as long as it's a, you know, it's a reaction because, I you know, you. yeah, so. Um, Valerie Brooks has a sort of great question, which um, Charles is kind enough to put on the screen. In this painting, the male reclining nude's expression in the mirror does not look passive to Valerie. Mm -hmm. um, how do you decide on the actual expression? The expression in the mirror? Yeah, the yeah. Uh, his face doesn't. Yeah. The expression doesn't look passive to Valerie. All right. interpretations are valid, right? Right, right. And I think that I, I wonder how much is just a personal reaction to it because, um, well, two things. One, in the original, her face is kind of a blur. You can't really see much. There's like yeah, her face is in shadow, yeah. and so you don't really see much expression. Um, and so there is more light um, on his face. Yeah, see, it's just kind of generalized that yeah. the face in the original. Um, but but I just wonder, you know, is it because it's a man that he looks less passive? This is know. what I mean by agitate or yeah. yeah. agitates isn't the right word. I just mean quiver or shiver yeah. or you know yeah. make you think mm -hmm. uh, um, and undo your conditioning enough to go, mm -hmm. hey, that's mm -hmm. a different feeling in my yeah. body as a viewer. Yeah. Well, it's great to be able to look at the the original and my version side by side because you can get. You, I think it's easier to pick up unless you're very, very familiar with the original. So, well, yeah. I, I want to pick on, pick up on something you said earlier by going mm -hmm. to a different painting. Yeah. Um, this one's a, it's hard to choose because I have two that um, have a similar impact on me. But the one I would like to look at is After Descanso de Marte by Velasquez. Oh, yes, yes. And um, I have several questions hmm. um, related to the discussion we just had. Yes. Uh, but so I would like, I don't know where you'd love to start. This painting is exquisite. It's uh, the model is someone we both know and adore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the original painting that's the referent. Yes. yes. Is this very male slightly older male, um, mm -hmm. musculature, mm -hmm. uh, spider gear. Yeah. Great, great satin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't miss that. Yeah, um, yeah. And the pose isn't exactly entirely, you know, uber masculine. Right. The pose is interesting. Um, but I would love to hear wherever you'd like to start um, with the relationship between um, gender between referent and new painting or um, body distinctions or masculine, feminine, um, or which we'll get to, I promise. I'm also interested in asking you about collaborating with your models. Yes, yes. Um, well, I mean, I, I touched on it before how difficult it was to find um, images of male nudes um, or partial nudes um, that I could put a female body into that pose and 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 get the um, effect that I wanted, um, and and also that I happen to like the painting to start with, you know, because I mean th that's part of it also. My own personal taste. I'm not just going to pick anything, um, and that's a painting I like. The the when I look at the original, I, I I mean it's called the rest of Mars of the god Mars. Right. So he's just kind of it's kind of a fatigued. Um, he he looks tired, you know. Um, he's been out, you know, hacking things up and fighting, and you know, um, you know, it's hard because a lot of my choices are subconscious, or you know, I, it's like there's there's so much um creative um information i put into my brain all my life that you know sometimes this stuff is going on in the back of my head and i don't yeah. quite know and it's like oh yes i'll do that you know and then i have to go back and oh how did i do that i don't know i just did it you know oh, I hear um, you. <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> 
but I mean, you know, the helmet, um, you know, the, the model, I don't think she'd mind us using her name, Nastasia, who's this fabulous um, poet and, and singer. We, we adore her. <laughs> yes, we adore her. Um, but, you know, at the time she's cut her hair since, um, but she had this, often she'd wear her hair like this. And it was just this amazing, beautiful uh, crown, this uh, almost explosion um, of, of hair. I mean, it's just, it's just beautiful. And it's like, I saw the, you know, I was going through images and was like, okay, what can I do? What can I do? And I found the, the Velasquez with the helmet. It's like, oh, yes, of course, you know? Um, and and again, it's this. It, it's happened in a couple of different paintings where um, the you know you 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 have a model and you decide, okay, this is the pose that w we want to work with. And humans are humans, and and sometimes you don't get exactly the pose. You 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 don't reproduce it exactly. Um, and often, um, I have found over time that the pose that I end up with does the work better yes. than the original. Yeah. Um, and yes. she's, she's more upright. She, um, you know, the light is more on her face. There's, there is more, um, you know, the original is kind of, he's kind of hidden. Yeah. You know, he's hidden in the shadow of that helmet. Yes. Um, and he's bent over. Um, and then you would look at her and the, there's more light. She's stronger. She's more, she's more upright. You know, yeah. she's powerful. She doesn't look tired. <laughs> she just looks, you know, like, don't mess with me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I love that relationship again between the two paintings, though, because in the original, there's like a fatigued male mm -hmm. warrior. Mm -hmm. And so that's uh, phenomenal to me in my own experience of that painting as a, a little bit of a deconstruction of the war hero. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's what's going on just privately for me when I sure. look at that painting. And then when this painting is in dialogue with it, mm -hmm. the nostalgia image is like an alternative hero story. Mm -hmm. Not the not the um, male hero of battle. Mm -hmm. Kind of in relation to the fatigued male hero who doesn't want to fill that role anymore when mm -hmm. I look at this painting in relation to that one. Mm -hmm. It's like, here's a restored honor, a restored glory, a mm -hmm. restored badassery uh, mm -hmm. that I never thought possible from mm -hmm. the first painting. And so you've achieved this, you know, a dialogic that bloom mm -hmm. possibilities mm -hmm. through Thank gender. You through race, mm -hmm. through uh, art history coming into the present and saying, you know, past and present are still speaking to each other. Mm -hmm. It's just, I mean, I bawled my face off the first time no. I posted that. I just started crying mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. that, you know, making it alive, making uh, it alive and, and having it be able to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just talking about it, it's it's interesting. I'm noticing things, you know, because, like I said, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I'm very intuitive. I don't think a lot about a lot. Me either. Me either. <laughs> this is why we like each other. Yeah, but I mean, looking at the original, I mean, you know, he is this defeated warrior. His 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 shield and armor and sword are are dropped on the ground, um, almost as you know. Uh, Poof, you know, can't deal with it anymore. And I'm looking at, at at my version now, it's sort of like it, I almost feel like um, they aren't there that she has jettisoned. They're there that she doesn't even need. Right. You know. Yes. This is sort of beyond that thing. So absolutely. I mean, I'm more. I'm more into uh, her. Her fist and hand mm -hmm. and the, the armor of her tattoo. Yes, yes. And the fact of her uh, phenomenal body, mm -hmm. um, which is a whole different use of this satin business, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I so agree with you. And so then the armor on the floor and the shield on the floor are, are history. Yeah, They're, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and what's been remade in your image is something mm -hmm. quite of the present and just 
a glory I've never seen before. Just Thank so incredible. You. Thank you very much. Hmm. Well, there's oh. a, a different painting I want to ask you about. Yeah. Again, this is all scaffolded because to me, all the paintings speak to each other um, quite profoundly. But there's a painting called um, After Venus with a Mirror by Titian. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, that's just delicious. <laughs> it's just <laughs> so I'm sure Charles can get yeah, that. Yeah, it's right there in the middle, yeah. Going on for us. Well, uh, mm, that's the other Titian. It's not, it's not that one. That one's After the Venus of Urbino, which is also yeah. by Titian. And also it's right in the middle. There you go. This well, one of the things, that, since we're talking about this, and we did talk about the Rokeby Venus, um, the reason I'm in the, both of those paintings, <laughs> where I'm not one in of others, my questions. What's that? That's one of my questions. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it's a practice or uh, a prudishness. I don't know what you'd call it. Um, both of those have, have uh, cupids or putti in them, yeah. naked children, and I felt weird painting naked children. So it's like... Okay, I don't want to do that. How do I make up for that loss? And so, um, I put myself in, tried to incorporate some of the color, um, certainly the function, but the because I'm both of those um, paintings, those figures are holding the mirror. Um, yeah. But yeah, so trying to trying to incorporate those kind of things, um, like. Um, it's like I'm pointing at the screen. Um, the uh, in the original, there's a wreath, uh, like a flower wreath, that is being you know directed toward her head. And in my version, my figure has a little tiny wreath that you can see in the corner too. That's kind of like that. And the, the color of the of the wings is sort of the color I'm using in my dress. You yes, know, I so. see. Yes, and I, I took yeah. I just have a confession that period of art history, the cherubs or mm -hmm. angel folk always look mm -hmm. like demonic little trolls. To oh, me. Yes, it's they a totally do. element to them. Yeah. Never got, look at, look at, I know. <laughs> like if Steve Bannon was a cherub. <laughs> exactly. So weird. Um, yeah. That's just a personal weirdness of mine. No, mind. I agree though. Yeah. But so in this referential paint, this history painting from mm -hmm. history, art history, you have the kind of um, this particular period of art history. There's a voluptuous woman, hmm. um, or there are probably better words for that. Um, just ample and big, yeah, yeah. kind yeah. of fluffy and fluffy. Yeah, definitely white. Yeah, um, and in your painting, mm -hmm. that figure is. I mean, this is another painting. When I first saw it, I gasped. Huh. And it's it's your representation of this particular model's body hmm. um, that is so. And so this is just my private viewing. I'm yes. one viewer interpreting yeah. <laughs> um, it. I so self-identify with the combination of masculine and feminine. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. In this model's body. Mm -hmm. And I in my real life. I wait for the day where those binaries fall away, mm. which I feel like is happening. Culturally. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. But I don't know if I'm going to make it to the perfect <laughs> day of heaven, um, right. <laughs> but this is a place where your representations really challenge a viewer to kind of let their binary drop off. Hmm. Um, it happens in other paintings too um, with a different male model. Mm -hmm. But that that um, interrupting the binary, letting it drop off, so that it's it's both neither masculine or feminine, but it's mm -hmm. also both masculine and feminine. Mm -hmm. And so, could you talk a little bit about mm, where do you fall on what I just said? Is it both? Is it neither? Is it important to you <laughs> to you know like let go um, of the terms or or what well it's it's complicated because i mean i yes <laughs> yeah duh. um <laughs> what a profound thing i just said it's so complicated um you know part of it is um the reason it's complicated is because uh we are 
instructed in how we should be all through our lives, especially when we're younger. Um, and, and then the longer you go on in this life, um, you get to know yourself better, hopefully. Um, and, and kind of push through the, the things that other people have told you, but also the, the decisions you've made for yourself yeah. and how you present yourself to the world and, and who you tell the world you are. Um, and so, um, you know, when I was a little boy, um, I wanted to be a little girl. Yeah. Um, and when I was 16 about, I, you know, I saw, um, transgender people on Phil Donahue and thought, dude, that's me. <laughs> yeah. And then nothing happened with that because, you know, life goes on and, um, this was the seventies, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, um, then it was like, well, okay, I'm mostly attracted to men. I must be a gay man. And that didn't work very well for whatever reason. Um, and, you know, so it's so just progression of life. And then realizing as I got older, um, how, how I, how I sifted out, you know, what, what my reality was. And, and um, I guess the easiest thing to say is non-binary. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was, I think uh, in a, in a it was a choice to some degree um, I don't know. I don't, the word choice is weird, but, um, in a different world, I'd probably be a woman <laughs> in a di different circumstances. Um, I hear you. um, because, you know, I'll say, I've, I've joked about this before. I'll see, I'll see a, um, good looking young man with, with some, um, small child, you know, his, his, new child and i feel like my my ovaries twitch you know it's sort of like <laughs> i need to have a baby you know this kind of weirdness um and uh but that's kind of my reality but you know i have lived my life with um besides my white privilege um male privilege privilege you know i have had um uh, i you know i've had that i've had that um power um and um i'm uh, i'm used to that <laughs> yeah. and also um it comes to, comes down to a lot of it is aesthetics which you might guess mean a little bit to me <laughs> so it's like i could not i could it, in the world we live in i could not um present myself in a way that would be entirely authentic yes although I'm working on that. <laughs> I hear you. And Find then, a way, you know. Well, in case you care, it happens mm. for me in relation to your paintings. Mm. It, the complication mm. is suspended and held vital mm. without falling into camps that war with each other mm. when I look at your paintings. Mm. And that is profoundly meaningful to me as the kid who wanted to be Robert Redford and Butch Cassidy in the Sun <laughs> for a good 30 years. Excellent. Excellent. That. Um, yeah. And I still feel like I have a chance. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm headed more towards Doris Lessing with the braids <laughs> yeah. wrinkles, but in my heart, I hold out this possibility. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you know, you're a little bit younger than I am, but, you know, we have lived with a certain body for so long. Um, and it's like, I, I'm kind of in awe of these young people who um, got to make a choice early. Yeah. They could make a choice yes. to some degree, you yeah. know? And in, in my son's generation, you mm -hmm. know, Miles, um, yeah. this is a new species and I could not be mm -hmm. more supportive. I would give my life for this new species of person. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not where you and I grew up, but we yeah. were we were along the storyline. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Would mm -hmm. be one way to put it. Yeah. Well, and also to to um, go in a in a direction that makes me a little uncomfortable. Um, I've read about the Native American um, role um, in some Native American um, cultures of the Burdash. Mm -hmm. um, which was this person who um, lived beautifully in between yep. um, and was honored and respected, which 
I think I should be. Oh, <laughs> I, should be I should be in a leadership role, sure. <laughs> but you know, I when I when I first read about that, I, it was it was overwhelming that it's I, the recognition I felt. I believe and again, you. you know, I'm a big old white guy, so I, I feel like I need to be uh, cautious and and uh, respectful of the fact that that is not my experience, and and I have really no connection to that, but. On some level, internally, that was a, a tremendous moment of recognition for me. Yes. So. Well, again, just to just to repeat myself, it <laughs> happens to me mm. in the viewing of your paintings mm. in a way I can't quite make it happen in conversations with other people mm. or Facebook or, mm. you know, even on the page, it happens to me in the space of viewing your paintings. It stays complicated and beautiful. And, and so partially, I just want to thank you for that. Um, Cause I, I feel like things are possible in the artwork that mm. I keep fucking up in my own life. <laughs> no, no. But I got, I got to get to this. Okay. I'm looking okay. at, I'm watching yeah. we have to get to, even if we go back to some other paintings, um, okay. After Le Déjeuner sur l'heure by Manet, yes, yes, we have to, because we do. Oh, where is it? <laughs> you... it actually, I don't think all the paintings one, are on there, Charles. One moment, please. We yeah. Okay. One moment. We're good. Find something else and I'll work behind the and scenes. And the smaller ones are not on there either. So the last four aren't on there. Whoopsie. There they are. There okay, there, there they are. They drop to the bottom. Other pesky paintings of mine are in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Well now, okay, so some of you are probably familiar with this painting, even if you weren't familiar with other paintings. Hmm. It's pretty famous, agreed? Yeah. 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 Um, in fact, I worried about doing something that was that, you know, iconic. No, 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 no. Because the agitation here is so profound. It's mm. like I'm shaking looking at <laughs> it. Um, and I almost, I almost can't make a cogent question out of this. Mm. But each figure mm. is its own interpretation site of gloriousness. Each one <laughs> of them. That's lovely. I have my pointer, and so I'm pointing each one of them, which no one can see but me. But can you go figure by figure and say a little something? Just you as the maker, as the painter. Um, something deep, or just saying something? No, something <laughs> shallow and. <laughs> oh, good! I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, you know, I have, I have four different people. They're all real people. Um, I'm on the right. That's the right. Um, and, you know, basically I was trying to find a way to interpret these original characters. I mean, to, to respect the original painting as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the original, he's got a black coat on and gray pants. So right. I have my little black, you know, my little writing, um, writing outfit on, writing habit. And he has a little gold scarf. So I gave myself, you know, it's just, that was easy, you know, just me yeah. putting on my outfits. Um, Although and, that's some outfits, you know. Well, thanks. It kind of I took up a lot of room. I could just wear that outfit the rest of my life. <laughs> I would recede from social life. And just wear that. Well, you know, I just got, I knew I had to, had to go there. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, my wife Gigi's in the background and I kind of had to morph her figure into the figure of this, woman he has in the background doing i don't know what you know <laughs> scooping up i don't know moss or, or weeds from the bed i don't know and she's t in the original she's out of scale so i made Gigi to scale because yeah that, that seemed more polite um <laughs> and you know nastasia again um you know i i i put her in sort of the clothes that the uh, the man is wearing but i kept her bow tie that she actually wore to the modeling session. Oh God, love it. <laughs> yeah, because because I like the color. Um, and and then Jude, you know this, the very, um, I don't want to say average as a as a negative thing, but he's just a regular looking guy. 
you know, um, and that's what I wanted. The the in a lot of these paintings, sort of the the beauty of of real people, you know, um, and I mean the real people that I find attractive, anyways. Um, yeah. So <laughs> you know, because that's what it, you know, you have to you, you make these choices. So um, uh, and I, you know his. I mean, it very much reflects the original painting in, in what's going on there, but you switch out the bodies and it becomes something else. Yes, it does. I mean, okay, so stop there for a second. Yeah. What the hell is going on in the original? <laughs> who, uh, who knows? To I mean, you. What's that? To you. To, to me? Yeah. You know, it's so it's so well known to me. I don't I don't know. Uh that I wonder about it, you know, it's like, well, it's always been that way, you mm -hmm. know? So, um, you know, and I've read about it and it's like, yeah, I get why it was pretty scandalous at the time. Um, yeah. I mean, it, for me, it, you know, it comes down to a lot of technical stuff, you know, painting, trying painterly. to find what's that painterly thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I don't paint like Manet. Um, and so, I, and my, you know, so my work looks a lot different. The color is brighter because I, Very. you know, I want it to be. Um, so yeah, I and mean, then um, and then you know, in the original, there's a pile of women's clothes um, in the left-hand corner um, because she's taken her dress off. Um, Clearly, and so I divided that little, um, you know, tableau or whatever um, arrangement he has at the bottom there, um, and and actually made men's clothes where the dress is and then, you know, wedged it up against his original, um, you know, arrangement of the basket and the little bread and all that stuff. So that was kind of fun, but yeah. you know, that's all, you know, that's not, that's not, that's just me having fun as a painter, you know, and uh, uh, being creative and, and arranging and fussing. And I don't know what, it means other than what it means obviously so well i have to tell you um, tell me, please. <laughs> i respect everything you just said uh mm. m for myself in writerly ways i could have mm. i could have spoken exactly how you spoke um but you healed something for me in this painting that mm. has haunted me about this painting for mm. my entire adult life wow i um well, because so I had, I had, you know, I have many different people in me. I'm a Gemini. Mm -hmm. My mother always said, my mother was also a Gemini. Being in a room with a Gemini is like secretly being in a room with 50 people. Yeah, yeah. And so one of my Lydia's has always been angry and rageful at the original painting mm -hmm. for the naked woman in the foreground is as an, um, a kind of, uh, you know, declothed next to the fruit object of male desire with mm -hmm. a supplicant woman in the background. So that's one Lydia. Right, right. A different Lydia has mm -hmm. always loved the look on her face, mm -hmm. which is sort of like, yeah, what? Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, right. This right. is my desire. And so there's right. like this feminist, different Lydia who's like, she's like, yeah. I can be here doing this. And so then when I saw your painting with some gender bending and, and reposing, mm -hmm. I it just healed something in me. It just oh, it's lovely. It, healed some, it made some of the Lydia's talk to each other in a room. And <laughs> That's great. My best days are when they can talk to each other. Um, I'm hoping we can quickly get to, though, um, after La Chemise Rose ah, yes. mm -hmm. by Lempica, because you were saying something about Jude uh, as a model. That does not happen to me in this painting. He doesn't. <laughs> Jude is, um, for me, just the viewer. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, utterly <laughs> remarkable uh. in this painting as a male with the, uh -huh. you know, the Rose nighty thing going on. Uh -huh. Um. And so was this again just you moving from the original and re-presenting or reposing? Um, because for me, Jude is everything as the model. And so maybe this is mm -hmm. a good thing to 
talk about collaborating? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, what do I want to say about that? Um, I'm trying to figure out how, I mean, you know, I have to be, I, I told this to Nastasia the other day. Um, I have to be a little in love with the model or infatuated to some degree to want to, to paint them, want to spend time with their face and, and sometimes yeah. body, you know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, there definitely was a time when I was infatuated with Jude, you know, um, cause he's a charming fellow, another Gemini. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm married to a Gemini, so there must be some sort of problem I have. Um, I, ha I have it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, he just, he, you know, I just sensed that he'd make a good painting, you know. Um, I, you know, well, you I, were right. I knew, what's that? You were right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, he had this this big dreamy eyes, and so you yeah. know they they were useful to me. <laughs> so yeah, and and it, you know again matching up the model with with the with the original painting, um, because um, when Nastasha came to pose, since I had a limited range of of originals to work from. You know, we just did those, you know, and there's like one more that she posed for that I might paint at some point. Um, but with the men who came and posed, I gave them this whole range because there's so many, you know, naked oh, right. women in our right. history, right. 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 you know. So, you know, most of them posed um, for a lot of the same paintings. And then it was just me going through my images going, okay, who really fits best, you know, who who embodies, you know, what I want to go for there. Those um, eyes, man, <laughs> with the relationship between the two. It's almost like he inhabits that painting. Mm. But still, this agitation idea I started with. Mm. I mean, that's, a, you know, the Art Deco era, the original, mm. you know, flattened out face in mm. terms of realism mm. um, and magnified eyes. But like he inhabits this painting of a woman so mm -hmm. profoundly mm -hmm. that it makes the viewer have to go home and go, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just such a such a credit to you for taking that relationship on and exploring it. Mm -hmm. Which is just saying again how amazing you are. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Um, and, 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 you know, this is a good example of, um, well, there's two coll two collaborations that we could talk about, one with the model, but also I felt very much going through this, my collaboration with the original artist. Yes. It's like, because none of them painted in a style that's similar to mine. No. And so finding finding um, ways to accommodate those differences and, okay, what... What could I change and still be comfortable with? What did I have to change? Um, and so, I mean, here, you know, we have um, pretty much her background. Yeah. Um, the original background. I changed yeah. some things about the the lacy part um, at the top there because I didn't like the way she painted it. Um, and yeah, she has like some black edging and stuff. Yep. I don't. Yeah. It just didn't work for me. Um, but. You know, there's lots of that stuff going on. Obviously, I didn't make her, I didn't make his neck, his neck all abstracted like that. But I did stretch his neck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, to, to give more of that effect. So I noticed that. I noticed yeah. that. So I thought about it a long time. Well, I've thought about all of them a long time. I'm I'm wondering if we don't have time, Charles, just go shut up, Lydia. Um, <laughs> there's one that's particularly. Um, Closet meaningful to me, which is after oh, Lamour de Marat by David. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, in, in, in this one, so Caravaggio, mm -hmm. I know you don't paint like Caravaggio, I no. get that, but that sentence you said, like you seem a little more intimate style wise with Caravaggio than some other artists. Um, now, which one are we talking about? Are we talking about the David or the Caravaggio? The after Lamour. 
Okay, that's the David. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it should be at the, the bottom. other two after Bacchus and after the birth of Venus, Botticelli and Caravaggio. So just hold it there. Don't okay. move. <laughs> um, by David. Yeah. There are some painters, it seems you, for me, the viewer, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Um, your style intimacy is closer Definitely. and more it's farther. And this painting is just like it came late in the series. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> and, um, it has personal impact for me because uh, the death of Marat is a big deal to me. This painting is a big deal to me. The mm. play that was made about it later mm. in life by Genet is a big deal to me. And when yeah. I saw it again, I gasped. <laughs> Which is oh. my highest praise is that I <laughs> or swoon or something like that. Lovely. Um, yeah. Can you just quickly speak to why include this? Um, this isn't, you know, one of these things is not like the others. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, I want to give a more profound uh, answer, but I finished the big one, the big, um, the uh, uh, Manet. Dejeuner. This, for some dorky me, I, I tend to save the biggest, to my mind, most important thing for last. And then I'm like, I'm going to finish it. Am I going to finish it? Uh, and it painted itself. It just like was just delightful, you know, thing to paint. I just enjoyed it and it got done. And then it's like, well, you know, I kind of have some extra time here. That's weird. Um, and so, yeah, these the three little tiny ones that I did at the end um, are different than the rest because they're me first of all, and right. they're all cropped. They're all crops of the of the original. Um, yeah, I noticed. Um, that. Yeah, be partly because I don't do nude. <laughs> I other that. people can take their clothes off, but I'm not doing that. So, um, damn you. Yeah. So it was just like, hmm, you know, what can I do? What can I do? Um, and you know, there wasn't a whole lot of thought. I mean, they're just, they're iconic paintings. I thought people will get them. I was a little worried about the Marat because um, I was afraid that people would be, think I was making fun of it, you know, by, by the, by the Band-Aid, you know. Um, and um, I mean, that is something I, 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 I've been concerned with um, through the whole show is like, you know, finding that balance. Okay, where can I be a little cheeky and and what's too far i mean because i'm i'm very concerned with the work of other artists i don't like um people who use famous paintings and put clown faces on them you know right. and do, know you do know. things like that it bugs me um because I, I have so much respect for um the hard work you know and uh so What's the question? <laughs> no, no, you're already talking about it. I just like to suggest that in mm -hmm. these these final three, mm -hmm. where you are re-inhabiting or reposing, uh -huh. that actually added a layer for me of oh. the artist stepping into that space and uh -huh. leaving open uh, challenging questions for us. The expressions uh -huh. in particular. Uh -huh. um, after Bacchus and after the birth of Venus, mm -hmm. the expressions in particular of you re-inhabiting the pose are um, part of the entire show, yeah, yeah. re-inhabiting the pose mm -hmm. and turning it back into a viewer question. Mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. think I'm so glad that you included them. I don't care if they came late. I mean, some <laughs> of my afterthoughts turned into the whole heart of a novel. So oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know I'm very happy with them too. I don't I'm, I don't mean to uh you know uh lessen them um yeah. whatever the expression would be. Um you know artists, you know, we just we just do what we do and <laughs> you know it I do know. Sometimes it doesn't sound all that thrilling when you describe how it happened, you know, or or important. Um, but I think if you're, you know, practiced um, in what you do and you are connected with what you're doing, um, you know, there's going to be something there. It's not just going to be some tossed off thing. It's going to hopefully, you know, be good and and um, do the work that um, you hope it does. So, yeah. 
while you speak eloquently and profoundly about your work. And also you healed something in me in the After Bacchus by Caravaggio, because I always thought that his face was such a little smug fucker. Yeah. Such a, like, yeah, Bacchus, I get it, whatever. But yours opens it back up as a question in a way that restores femininity to the chaos. And I just, it healed, again, healed something in me. Well, it's such a wacky painting, and and I'll tell you a little secret. Um, uh, Gigi and I discussed her posing for that, um, for a version of that painting, and I totally want to do that. There was a do it. My was a little of, of the you know of the husband you know going oh do I want everyone to see my wife's boob you know um, <laughs> and so so I kind of you know she was like yes I'll do it. Um, Gigi. And, like, well, uh, and then I waited Gigi, too long. Make him do it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I think it's gonna it's gonna happen. But um, but then I waited too long because it, it it's a complicated painting. Actually, all that detail and all the stuff that isn't in my version. Um, but then you know, time came to find something, and the the thing I always found so strange about that that face is. The body is white. It's like this white, white, white flesh. Like alabaster these, white. Yeah, except these pink cheeks and then these eyebrows that look like they're drawn on. Totally. Oh, and so my original intention was to um, sort of, you know, sort of block out my eyebrows as they are now and then draw eyebrows on top, sort of. And then I could, at the end, I thought, oh... That's just too much. So I left it as it is. I don't know. Uh, that well, might I, have looked very different. I trust your intuition <laughs> implicitly, explicitly with my whole body. I, I just want to, I want to ask you quickly, do you know what you're painting next or what happens to you when you're done with a series and you have an exhibition. I only know what happens to you after you finish a novel and you fall off a cliff and someone yes. runs over you. You, you. you hope, yes, you hope you have the opportunity to um, be sad and, <laughs> and, and, and rudderless and, and yeah, yeah. Um, well, I had some ideas about what I want to do next, which is kind of surprising. Um, I want to do more like this. That's that's definitely the case. But I had other ideas about some things I wanted to do. But then I have another gallery, and they said, "Can you do some some adorable little animals um, with jewelry? And can you do twelve by the end of um, January?" So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't really have. I don't didn't really get a chance to uh, mourn or whatever usually happens after a show, but. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, you know, I just kind of do what's in front of me. I hear that, but I want to pay homage to the morning piece because that's real, mm. what you said. Shannon Hunt has this question. Can you yes. see Was there a particular original painting that inspired the series? Hmm. Yes. Well, two. I mean, the, the first two I started were The Venus of Urbino, and the Venus with the mirror. Those were drawn out and started, I think, you know, like maybe even before we moved. So several years. Um, and then I just didn't have a, a chance to really get into it. Um, I had done three, I thought I'd only done two, but somebody pointed out that I'd actually done three of this subject matter in the past where I took a famous painting and changed the gender of the body. Um, and I'd always thought, this is this is good. I like this. This is something I should do more of. So it was finally, it's like, okay, let's just dive in and just do it, you know? So, yeah. But those two paintings were the, the first, you know, easy choices for me um, to, to do those particular ones, yeah. I know we're winding down. Can I just ask you really quickly, in, unless Charles is about to cut us off, do you love history? Do you what? Oh, what's yeah. your relationship to history? Because I oh, it's always I've always been um, when I was a little kid. It was always about history. I mean, I think I said I said something yesterday about Marie Antoinette. You know, and and history brought me to art um, because I didn't have that background. You know, it wasn't in my family, but I was always reading history biographies. You know, of 
Marie Antoinette or, you know, or, or, you know, interesting people who live glamorous lives that I wasn't living. Um, and it was, a, it was an escape, but at, at the same time, you know, most of those books had illustrations of fabulous portraits and, and, and those kind of portraits directed me toward art. And then, you know, um, like my dad, um, he, he always talked about how he, he could just sit and read encyclopedias, you know, just like, you know, just, just, you know, learn, learn, and you just absorb all this stuff. Cause it's like, you know, and that's what I do online now. It's like, you know, I lose hours because it's like, I look up one thing and it leads me to something else. And, and that's that kind of um, brain thing is, is how I got into art um, because I was always, always being led to something more, you know, and it oh, just God. fills me up. So, yeah. That's a beautiful place to bring us and to mm. land. It mm. fills my chest with oh. uh, solidarity too. Um, and you're bringing history into the present eternally um, makes it alive. So mm. gratitude. Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you. Hmm. This was fabulous. Can we do this again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> it's it's really helpful that um, when there's a rapport already, mm. and and I think both of you were spot on mm. to say the spontaneity of like let's just look at images and see where it goes and yeah. um, let your conversation pick up on past thoughts you've had with each other and inspirations you've given each other or the insights. Lydia, I gotta say that honesty and directness has been so refreshing and wonderful mm. like reading your books oh fabulous yeah. so everybody <laughs> who's watching make her cry. If you don't have all of her <laughs> books go get run now let your fingers do the typing uh, <laughs> go everywhere to every bookstore and buy them mm. and but i just i thought uh a word smith um, of course, why should I be surprised that that one word choice with a painting was, uh, so I sincerely appreciated both of your candid mm -hmm. conversation. This has been so special and, and meaningful and a ton of people are watching that are loving this Lovely. It be archived. So if anybody asks you, oh, I missed it. I want to watch it again. It will be archived with, uh, captions on the Frolic gallery. Sweet. Um, and can I say one thing because we didn't actually get to it? I just want to thank the models um, who just were so brave and and <laughs> did something I could never do um, and just contributed um, so much to the work. Um, and I there are little ways in the individual paintings that I kind of honored them that um, that I you know they'll they'll know and hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to them about that, but. You know, it's it's an incredible gift um, to to collaborate that way, um, yes. to, to give them themselves that way. So yes, it's great. Um, please, if anybody wants to visit, um, come by. Our weekdays are often very quiet here, so you might even have the whole gallery to yourself. Um, this weekend will be pretty busy. We've got some events with. Um, Michael Schulteis, who yes. also has a solo show in the gallery simultaneously. And yes. tomorrow night at 5.30, we'll be having a conversation with him. Yeah. So hope you can join in for that and come see his show. But um, if you want a quiet moment or uh, come anytime or a loud moment, come Friday or Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both so much. And thanks to all the viewers. Thank you, and Thank you Lydia. To seeing everybody. So, um, Lydia and Stephen, if you want to stay in the green room for a minute afterwards, it's all good. Okay, thank you, everyone. I'll end thank the you. broadcast now. Bye-bye. <laughs>